Okay, so for the final video um, for this class, um, we have to you know pick 10 concepts and um, discuss them starting from 10. Um, so um, my 10th one that I picked was um, influence power uh, in politics. Um, that was chapter 12. Um, I chose it because um, I chose it for my number 10 because I think that's important. Um, but I don't think politics, you know, should be within an organization. I feel like it just kind of, uh, you know, takes away from people that are working hard. You know, if you've got an influencer or like someone that has, you know, a higher power um, that can bump somebody up from, uh, I'd say, like a lower spot in the company to somewhere up higher. Um, there are organizations that have politics, uh, power and influencers inside of it um, or inside the company. But I think overall um that you know that stuff really shouldn't you know continue um so for number nine i chose leadership perspective um that's chapter 11. Um, i chose this concept because i thought it was interesting that it, every, every leader has a different perspective and um, i focused that chapter i focused on uh, the contingency theory um and how it explains that no no one's leadership uh, like their style fits every situation. Um, that was very eye opening for me just because it's very, very true. No leadership style is going to, you know, co op with every situation possible. Um, it kind of gets people out of their comfort zone. And um, I thought that was, you know, a big thing for me, you know, I'm a very, I'm an introvert, I don't talk a whole lot, uh, kind of would get I mean, certain situations would get me out of my comfort zone and that you know applies to me i think um so for number eight i chose uh teams chapter seven um and the reason why because teams are big importance in any organization um there are, are there are advantages and disadvantages to having teams um you know an advantage is always you know everyone's working together everyone's clicking um, the project or whatever they're working on is getting done fast and efficient. Uh, there's no hiccups. Um, uh, but some disadvantages, you know, could be, you know, someone piggybacking on somebody, um, not doing their part of it, you know, slacking, making the other ones work harder. And then that overall just creates like a little bit of maybe resentment or something. And, you know, maybe later on that team falls apart. Um, so for number seven, I chose creativity and innovation, and that's chapter nine. Um, I chose this one because creativity helps out organizations in a huge way. Um, creativity sparks others into thinking outside of the box, maybe. And uh, there are many, many ways to, you know, have a creative thinking and and different types of innovation. Um, the one thing that stuck out in my head on this one um, was the handout that you gave us and class that we went over and all the creative tools um, that I mean, the amount of creative tools is almost endless. I mean, you can, you can take things in different ways, you can, you know, look at something or you can maybe even listen to something or maybe just stop what you're doing, and, you know, give yourself a break. Um, but there's tons of ways to brainstorm ideas and to be more creative. And I think if you're a creative person, uh, comes easier, but if you're not, you, you know, and you can use some of these tools to help you, you know, create more ideas and, you know, maybe in the end, help your organization out um, in a big way. Um, so for number six, I had motivation, um, and this was the practices and um, applications. That was chapter six. Um, I chose this one because motivation can help productivity in an organization. Um, some practices use um extrinsic uh, rewards and just like uh and it consists of like seniority based pay uh where you know you got to work your way up and do a higher part of the company organization so that you can you know get the pay that you deserve and there's a job content um based pay as well which is you know your whatever position you're at you're content with it and that's i mean that's what you're going to get paid um skill based pay which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you're really good at what you do, uh, you obviously should be getting paid what you think. You, I mean, that's reasonable. Um, and then performance-based pay. Um, you got to put in the work to get your pay and you can't 
uh, you can't slack, you know, if you start slack and then you can, you know, that I feel like that should be able to be taken away pretty easily. Um, and m like all those things are based off pay. Money is a big motivator. It can, you know, but if you say, I'll give you a raise, if you put your heart and everything right into this project and they do that, but there's a disadvantage, but disadvantage by you I mean you can't give somebody a raise every single time, like you know they you know do well. So that's kind of a disadvantage. But I think overall it does. I mean it helps productivity for the most part in organizations. Um, so number five, I chose conflict and negotiation, and that was chapter ten. Um, I chose this concept um, because it happens in multiple situations in every company. Um, and it depends on the conflict on, and then how it's like resolved, you know, are you, what types of negotiation tactics are you using uh, to, minute, to diminish the situation? Um, trust is a big thing in a conflict. You know, are, can you trust that person that's negotiating with you um, on that you're gonna get what, you know, you deserve and, you know, you're, you've got dysfunctional conflicts, um, which, you know, get two people that are, just constantly butting heads and there's not there's never uh, a good outcome with that um, so number four i chose per uh, perception and learning and that was chapter four um, people in every part of management and in every organization uh, still continue to learn and um, everyone has a different perception you know some people learn something new and they can have a a different perception on it than somebody else and uh obviously that can be good or it can be bad um maybe that one person thinks that that new thing that they're learning isn't um doesn't apply to them and the person next to them that think could think that it does apply to them so i mean depending on how you take it and how you take you know the learning process um it can be really good for a person and the company or it can be really bad and and there's, you know, obviously some backlash that come with it. You know, you're going to get an employee that might go to a manager saying, why do I have to do this training? I already know it. Or you get somebody that says, yes, thank you for the training. It helped me a lot. Um, I feel like learning is a never ending thing. And uh, especially in any company. Um, so for number three, I chose uh, decision making and ethics. And that was chapter eight mainly because it's the, I mean, it's the top three for me for the fact that you always make decisions. You make your decision every single day. You wake up in the morning, what are you gonna make for breakfast? That's a decision. Obviously it's a little bit different in an organization uh, depending on the company and stuff, but you have to make good ethical uh, decisions. You know, there's three approaches that you can, uh, you can make while making an ethical decision. And um, I think each one of them applies to different people and depends on their character uh, that was the one thing that stuck out in that chapter was character counts um, you got to have i mean if you don't have the best of character you might not get that ethical decision and it may hurt that person or it even may hurt that organization um, overall in the end so for number two i chose effective communication and that was chapter 13. Um, I chose this one as my number two because communication is key. Communication is happens in everyday life, and especially in an organization. If you've got, you know, a higher up in a in a company that needs to, you know, relay a message down to say someone on the bottom, you need to have that effective communication where you don't get things jumbled and, you know, they hear the wrong thing. You know, that's the worst thing that can happen in an organization. Um, but if you do have that effective communication, things can get done more efficiently and in good time. And, uh, but with good communication, you, you also need good listeners. That was a big thing that stuck on that chapter for me. Um, as for myself, I'm a big listener, not much of a talker. So um, always listening. But if you don't have those good listeners, you know, it might just go in one ear and out the other. And now you're kind of wasting time. You know, you could be doing something else. But um, Communication is key, uh, especially in an organization. And my number one um, is emotions, attitude, and stress. Um, that was chapter three. It was an early thing that we learned early on, but I chose it as my number one because 
everyone deals with emotions and stress and uh every depending on the day you know you you're super stressed you're going to come with a bad attitude um i think that every organization needs you know their environment needs to have either a place or just something that people are allowed to you know open up maybe cope with some stress um so that they can have a positive effect on the company you don't want somebody um that comes in, their emotions are high, their stress levels through the roof, and they come in with a bad attitude, you know, you're going to affect somebody else in a bad way, in a negative way. And um, the last thing you need is for a company to implode because, you know, a few people were super, super stressed out with whatever they're working on. And then they're all of a sudden their attitude changes. And now you've got the whole team, you know, with a bad attitude going into it and everyone's emotions is just attacking each other. So um, I think that if, uh, if companies can control that um, just in the slightest, I think you'll see a huge positive effect. And, you know, you want to be happy at work. You want to, you know, you want to do it, whatever you do in life, you want, you know, you want it to make you happy. So um, I feel like if you're not happy, you got to get out of it and try something different. And those three things are a huge, huge factor, um, I think, in the end of, uh, you know, overall happiness. So, and that's, that's the final. So, uh, thank you very much. Had a great semester.